an AL Division Series rematch from 2011. Yankees baseball as New York goes up against the Detroit Tigers. And now it's out to Detroit with Gary Thorne, John Crook, and Steve Phillips. Baseball from the American League and the Detroit Tigers at home. How would you describe him other than just a winner? Well, a very fine pitcher, Justin Verlande, his stuff on display. Great to be with you. 2K Sports presents Tuesday Afternoon Baseball. And Steve, what's he got in his mind now as he pitches against these Yankees? Uh, it's a phenomenal lineup right here. That's why this outstanding right-hander is going to have to be on top of his game to be able to neutralize some of their big bats and get the outs he needs. He has to work ahead. Now let's take a look at the Yankees' offense. And our scouting report, John, who are we watching for today? Well, one of the biggest knocks on Curtis Granderson was the fact that he couldn't hit left-handed pitchers in order to be considered a star. Well, 2011, he figured that out. That's why right now, if he can... And it's Derek Jeter leading off the game. For the New York Yankees, shortstop number two, Derek Jeter. It's 0-1 as he swings and misses at that fastball. 330 career average against the Tigers. 0-1 Verlander kicks and deals. Strike two. No balls. Two strikes. Jeter will be edging up on that plate a little. Fastball swung out and missed. Struck him out. One away. Well, a good, great confidence right there in his stuff. Could have wasted a pitch right there, but he figured, why worry? That's a great job of finishing off the batter in a hurry. Never got a chance to see much. Let's see how the Tigers line up on defense. Highlights, John, from these fielders. Well, even if he couldn't play a lick of defense, you'd still find a way to get Miguel Cabrera's bat in the lineup on a daily basis. But he's adapted well to first base. You have to remember, the minor leagues, he was a shortstop. He got to the big leagues at, at an early age, he was a third baseman. Then he moved to the outfield. I think first base, though, is the best position for him because he doesn't have to have a ton of range, but he still has a pretty good glove, and he can still throw the ball when he's asked to do it. And the uh, first pitch was a strike. Got him at 0-1 right now. Well, what a playoff series these two teams had last year. So many great series in the course of October. But this one, Tigers-Yankees first-round matchup, a full five games was right up there with any series. Fastball in there, struck him out, out number two. Well, K Cam's going to show us the four-seam fastball here. Great setup this time with the off-speed pitch. And following it up, he couldn't catch up to the heater. Couldn't even get a bat off his shoulder. Great combination of pitches when you can freeze a hitter like that. And it's Mark Teixeira at the plate. In that Tigers-Yankees series we were talking about, the Yankees won the first two by a total of 15 runs, and then the Tigers, John, won their three games by a total of four. Yeah, but game five at Yankee Stadium was a classic. Detroit hit back-to-back -back home runs in the first inning, and they clawed their way to a win through a lot of tense innings. Here's the delivery. You're out. A big swing and a miss for Mark Teixeira. Strike three and he's out. And a quick inning for Justin Verlander. He's taking care of business all by himself as he strikes out the side. First chance for the Tigers coming up. It's going to be Jackson now. He's going to get us started here in the home half of the first inning. Austin Jackson. First pitch to him. This one hit and a long foul ball down the left side. And the 0-1 by Sabathia. Foul! Jackson with a foul ball. Here we go, Tiger. Grounded to Teixeira. He plays it on the hop. And he'll step on first for out number one. Number four, Omar Infante. Jimmy Leland's put this line up together for this ball game. John, who do we keep an eye on? Well, the excitement that Austin Jackson can bring, and you watch this game today, he can make highlight reel plays in the outfield, and he can also win games with his bat. He's still trying to figure out, though, the power part of his game. He has the ability, though, to hit for a high average, and boy, I tell you, once he gets on, he is very, very dangerous on the base pass. Can change the game in so many ways. Look for him to do it today. Swing, hot shot, played by Cano. So Infante is retired. Here's a look at how the Yankees will match up defensively. And uh, scouting those fielders, John. Well, Ichiro Suzuki, and, and look, 
outfielders aren't known for their great arms anymore. They're more about offensive players, so they just stick out there. Ichiro Suzuki's a different animal. This guy keeps runners from going first to third with that cannon-like arm and the most exciting play in baseball, the sacrifice fly. If he catches it in right field, pretty good chance there's going to be a play at the plate. This one towards Granderson. And he's there to retire the sign. Only five pitches to get out of that inning. That'll rest your arm. We're scoreless in Detroit. And if you're just joining in, Gary Thorne with Steve Phillips and John Crunk bringing you Major League Baseball here on 2K Sports. And it's Robinson Cano now. And Verlander has him 0 and 1 with that called strike. Gary, he gets a little over anxious at the plate when the count goes to 0 and 1. So look for them maybe to expand the strike zone and get him to chase something. And with two strikes on him, Cano, a good contact hitter, will just look to put it in play. He gets two quick strikes on the hitter, but he can't be too selective now. He's got to go right at him. And Robinson Cano will go down swinging. That is strike three. Good movement, 89 miles per hour. He can't show it to you. The ball's going up and in on him, and he still should have been able to handle it. John, it really looked like he had some trouble uh, timing that swing. Well, you've got to be especially careful about timing these inside pitch because the hitter, you need to shorten up your swing just to get to him. And Alex Rodriguez is at the plate and has one down. Like most years, the Yankees entered 2011 as an odds-on favorite to win the pennant. They played like it during the regular season, wrapping up the best record in the American League. And this at bat already 0-1, first pitch was a strike and that great season the Yankees had made the postseason disappointment even more so you got to know to share Granderson and uh, three of the top four RBI men in the AL John yeah and they fell short in the first round of the playoffs despite outscoring Detroit 28 to 17 in the series the Tigers clawed out some very close games and won the series in five it was a hard loss for the Yanks to swallow a oh, pretty healthy break 88 mile per hour breaking ball and here's Curtis Granderson one for six lifetime against Justin Verlander. Strike Granderson one. swings and misses for strike one. Strike and two. it's 0 2. Granderson, short swinger anyway, will just look to contact here. Pitcher's got him right where he wants him now. Up ahead, 0-2. He could waste the pitch if he wants to. Third ball, that tied him up in knots. Swung on and missed. Side retired. No hits, nobody left on. And a good defensive half inning. Still nobody on the board here in Detroit. Cleaned up batter, do up next. And as Prince Fielder in the box now. He's going to start the second for the home team. Sabathia with the windup. Swings hits this one pretty well. Deep right center. And Ichiro gets to it. Well, they followed the advanced scouting reports to a T. They played the outfielders back that time. And he hit it right into the teeth of the defense. And Torrey Hunter. Well, I guess the AL East last season, Detroit was as good as anyone. 20 and 16 in all. An extraordinary record against the strongest division in baseball. There's a swing and a liner towards the gap in left field. That falls in. First hit of the ball game for this club. And a lot of people looked at that record against the East by the Tigers team was talking about in saying, look, this Tigers team is really good and ought to be there in the postseason. Game. Yeah, Boston was really the only team that took it to them against everyone else in the East. Detroit was 500 or better. It's wow. Dirks at the plate. Well, so many questions at the end of the season if C.C. Sabathia would opt out and test free agency. Ultimately, signing an extension to stay in New York, one of the best pitchers in the game. CC's decision not to opt out and to stay with the Yankees. He loves New York, and New York loves him. Well, no question about it. With that kind of run support you have behind him, why wouldn't you like that? You no, know, he has a chance to be a big-time winner every time he goes out there. Gets the fastball by him that time, and he's in control now, 0-2. Boy, a nice-looking set of pitches that time. He didn't daddle around with the strike zone. Now, nothing wasted. Just three pitches over the plate. Sits him down. Now, with two outs, here's a chance for Victor Martinez. And in this matchup, lifetime 281 off the Yankees. And a swinging strike on that first pitch from Sabathia, 0 and 1. Here it comes. And Victor Martinez looks at that one, and it is an even count. 
When you throw a breaking ball like this, you want to start it on the corner and break it off the zone, trying to get the hitter to chase. The hitter didn't take the bait here. This one's pretty well hit to deep left center. Gardner will field. And that's out number three. Keep those innings going. CC Sabathia put in some effective pitching so far. For the New York Yankees. Folks here enjoying an afternoon of baseball. Nice day so far. Just a few clouds. It's going to be Nix now. He's going to start the third here. Takes a swing at that fastball. Can't connect 0 and 1. A career 180 hitters so far. Low numbers against the Tigers. The pitch. Breaks on a curve in there. He's behind now 0 and 2. The hitter needs a two strike approach. Shorten up the swing. Think about going the other way. Big swing and a miss on a heater. Strike him out one down. Well, textbook way of pitching. Three pitches, three strikes. Outstanding command during that at bat. And Stewart settles in. You know, one of the most impressive things about Justin Verlander is he's still so young. I mean, we think about pitchers getting into the prime of their career and trying to sustain it. He's still in the front end of that prime of his career. A lot of good years ahead of him. First pitch looked like a circle change over for a called strike. Pitch is coming consistently in three digits for Verlander. And you wonder what it's going to be like as he grows as a pitcher and able to throw something maybe a little softer. I mean, the thing is, you know, he throws 100 miles per hour, and he does it in the eighth inning and in the ninth inning of the game. He gets faster and stronger as the game goes on. That's crazy. Able to set him down there, chalk that one up. He's a strikeout for him. Well, he must have been looking for something else on that one. Rung him up with a decent pitch to hit, albeit inside. Uh, might have been inside a little bit. With two strikes, you can't afford to give up that pitch. You need to be aggressive and try to protect. Two outs in the box, Brett Gardner. And in this matchup, lifetime, 375 off Justin Berlin. Watches a fastball that's in there, 0-1. Strike below the waist, and he's in the hole now, 0 and 2. And Brett Gardner swings right through that one. That's strike three. And they're unable to make any noise here in this half inning. We're scoreless in Detroit. And Johnny Peralta to lead it off. Number 27, Johnny Peralta. It's hit foul by Peralta. Foul! Sabathia with the windup. Got the bat on that. Granderson's there. At the play is made. Over the Detroit Tigers. Catcher. Number 13, Alex. Avila Alex. will get his chance at the plate now. Career one for seven off Sabathia. Fouled oh. off. Up the middle. And it's through. That's a base hit for Avila. Now that's going to bring Austin Jackson to the plate. Well, with one out here and a guy on first base, the last thing you want to do is hit into a double play. Let's see if he can stay away from that. Well, sophomore year for Austin Jackson in 2011, he built on some things and continued to grow, but still has a lot of work to do, including the strike zone. And as we mentioned with Jackson, 181 Ks for him last year. He served towards the middle. He snares it, gets one at second. Not in time to the share. They're only going to get one on that. Here's a replay of that single. Close play at first base, but he gets there in time. Well, you can see on the replay, he didn't beat it by much, but just enough. You know, usually get infield hits to second base. And Infante's batting. Grounded out his last time through. The first pitch. Swing and a ball pop foul down the right field line. Oh!
And the 0 1 by Sabathia. Head up the middle. And that gets through for a base hit. Fantastic chance here. Uh, 0 1 mistake right here. He throws it over the heart of the plate. And he pays for it. RBI opportunity right here for Miguel Cabrera. He is good. They're going to try for a double steal. Right one. Oh, man, the double steal worked as he beat the throw. Well, here's the replay. We'll see the double steals a victory in its own right here. Boy, lots of times you get the second guy, the, the tail runner for the out. They couldn't even do that there. No, they couldn't do either one. It's the defense broke down, and the base running got him out of whack. Ball! Miguel Cabrera not fooled by that pitch. That'll even the count. A good action on that pitch running away, but it's a ball you have to get down to the zone. Don't throw it up. Here's one hit very well deep. This one towards Granderson. And that's out number three. They get two men in scoring position. Couple of hits. Can't get them home, though. The Tigers can't get the offense going.